Monday of month of May. I hope you guys are enjoying the sunshine and the beautiful flowers and, and trees that are just blooming and growing and so nice and green. I hope you're getting some nice um, fresh of air every day and, um, and you're all set for worship this morning. All right, I'm so glad you got to join us this morning. So let's um, just gather ourselves together. Make sure you are um, somewhat decently dressed, not on your PJs, please. Make sure you have your Bibles with you, right next to you, so you're ready, sitting up straight, not laying down. So let's show a good etiquette word as we worship, all right? So we are going to begin with a word of prayer this morning. So if you are ready, breathe, and let's be joyful as we worship the Lord. Let's put our hands together and let us open with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for just wonderful fresh of air you've given us this morning as we gather ourselves to worship you that allow us to come together as body of Christ. Even though we're not together, physically together worshiping, that we know that we are all worshiping in spirit and that you are with us. And as Pastor Solomon comes to preach your word, please be with him. Use him as your vessel. Um, may you speak to us. And as we listen, please help us to be attentive and be more focused, Father God, in listening to your instructions. Father, as we praise your name, please fill us with your joy. We love you, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, boys and girls, you guys are all ready? I know it's been a long time since we all praised together. I don't know, when was the last time you sang a praise song? I hope it was this morning or yesterday, not so back last week. All right, everybody stand up. Praise the Lord! Yay. Praise the Lord!
Let's pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you for the Lord's Day. I thank you for watching over us for another week. Um, I pray that as we gather through technology, through Zoom online, to worship you, God, that you, we all still have the same hearts wherever we are, that we have to really focus on you at this time to um, listen to the pastor's sermon and the prayers and the teachings. And also, even though we're not physically next to our um, brothers and sisters or friends, please help us to really engage with one another through the, by the heart um, as one heart of Jesus. I pray that you know, even in this, even in this uncertain times, that we keep you close to us, especially, and that trust that you have everything in control, so that we may be able to follow you closely. I thank you, and Jesus, name I pray. Amen. Let's state the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hello, boys and girls. So good to see you all, and good morning. Can you believe it's already May? Right? It's already May. I hope all of you are doing great, doing really, really great in your lives. And I also hope that you all are being great children of God in your life as well. So, on the first Lord's Day in May, we are going to start a new curriculum, okay? To know and learn how we should please God. Do you know what please mean? It's a little bit different from the word we use when we ask a favor from others. Pleasing God means bringing pleasure, happiness for God. Then how should we do this? How should we do so? In the following weeks, we are going to look through the Ten Commandments to explore and learn what God wants us to do and how we and please God. And today, before really before before we really start and move on to each one of the ten, ten commandments, I am going to tell you broadly why the ten commandments were given to the Israelites and given to us. So open your Bible and look for Matthew. Matthew 22, verse 34 to 40. Hmm. You might ask, wait, wait a second. Why are we looking for the gospel of Matthew in the New Testament? Isn't the Ten Commandment give... <clears throat> so open your Bible. Look for Matthew 22, 34 to 40. Hmm. You might ask, wait, why are you looking for the gospel of Matthew in the New Testament? Aren't the Ten Commandments are given in the Old Testament? Well, you're right. And we will look at the book of Exodus as well. But, but the best summary of the meaning of the Ten Commandments is, is the summary that Jesus Christ speaks to us and speaks to the Israelites. OK, 
Okay, let's read this together. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him to a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. One on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Amen. All right, this is the story that Jesus gave a lawyer a great teaching in public. This lawyer asked Jesus, Oh Jesus, which is the great commandment in the law? The law, he said in here, means all the laws that the Israelites had been keeping for many, many decades since, since God provided them the Ten Commandments. There were so many details in, 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 in these commandments that God commanded the Israelites to do. If you see the books in the Old Testament, especially the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, you can figure out that the Israelites kept those various commandments that God gave to them. They believed, they strongly believed, when they can perfectly do all the tests that God told them to do in this law, they can be worthy in front of God. But they ignored, they ignored the essence of the law. And Jesus Christ, he knew it so, so, so well. Therefore, he taught the lawyer and including the people around him, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, around, around them, he taught two big commandments. The basis of the law. First, you shall, your, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Second, you shall love your neighbor as well. As well. Like you love yourself. Okay, what a great summary of the law. And the first official group of commandments. The Ten Commandments is also applied in this summary that Jesus Christ gave us. Okay, I hope all of you still remember the Ten Commandments. For those who are new here, new in primary and JEM department, it's fine. It's fine if you cannot follow us right now, but try your best to follow and make sure after after we, we are going to learn in following two several weeks is you can memorize the Ten Commandments. Okay, let's briefly go over this. Ready, set, begin. You shall have no other God before me. You shall make no idols. You shall not Take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Keep the Sabbath day holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. And you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not profess. Wow! All of you did a wonderful job here. And then some of you might figure out why I say this summary of Jesus Christ is the, is the best summary and it is really fits on these Ten Commandments. If you look at the first four of them, all four of them are about loving God, aren't they? Okay, now look at the rest of them. All six of them 
are about loving your neighbors, the people around you. With respect and love, we should love God and love our neighbors. That's the broad meaning of Ten Commandments. That I need all of you deeply think about this. Think about this and think about my question here. Why should we keep these two great commandments in our hearts? As Christians, why does God give these Ten Commandments to us to follow? And I'm saying to you, because, because God loves His people, His children first. Okay, look at the book of Exodus, the Ten Commandments. It is written in chapter 12 and just allow me to briefly summarize what happened before the before the israel arrived at mount sinai to receive the ten commandments the people of israel they were badly suffered in egypt and because god he loved the people of israel and he remembered the promise that he made with abram Isaac and Jacob. God chose Moses to take his people out of Egypt. They were slaves, but they became free and arrived in the wilderness. Many things happened. So many things happened. But we can see that the people of Israel, they blame God. They disliked their lives in the wilderness. But God, He still loved. He still loved them and did not abandon them. Abandon means give up. Then they arrived at Mount Sinai. And God said that God will make a promise, to make a covenant with them. That He will be their Lord, their God, and they will be His people. And I'm, I'm truly, truly saying to you, this is the truth. There are endless love, endless stories that we can see in, in the Bible to show God's everlasting love towards His people, the Israelites. Because God loved his people, the Israelites. First, God sent his servant Moses to, to save them from Egypt. Because God loved them first, they could be called as the people of God. And because God loved them first, God, God called his people to love him First. And as God loved his people, God asked them to love one another. Hmm. Okay, and as, as the believers of Christ, we should do the same thing as the Israelites were asked to do. Because God, once again, loves his people, his Believers, first, God sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from sin. Right? Because God loves us first in our lifetime. And, and as the believers of Christ, we should do the same thing as the Israelites did. The Israelites were asked to do. Because, because once again, God loves His people, His believers first. God sent his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from sin. Because God loves us first, 
we are called to be the children of God because God loves us first. We should love our God first. And as God loves us, we should love one another and show this great love of God to the world for the name of God. Hmm. Now, now, I believe all of you can answer my question. Why? Why should we keep these two great commandments in our hearts? As Christians, why does God give these Ten Commandments to us and to follow? Because God loves us first. Boys and girls, as Jesus, Jesus Christ said, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And it is our duty to remember the, the fact that God loves us first in our lifetime. I hope all of you take effort to keep this in your hearts, in your hearts, to love God, to love neighbor. And I believe throughout the, the coming, the following weeks, all of you, all of you can understand how we should please God with our faith in Christ and how we should live a faithful Christian life. Remember, God loves us first. That is why, that is why we should love God and our neighbors. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Let us be here to honor worship. Lower times. Time just flies so fast and it's already May. We have suffered a lot, but Lord, we believe that you are with us and we believe that you are our God. And we, and we believe that you love us first. Because you love us first. So you sent your only son to save us. And Lord, we really want to remember this in our heart. And Lord, we really want to be the faithful ones. So please, God, please be with us. And please let us have heart to understand what Ten Commandments are really, really telling us to follow. And we really, really want to live the life that Ten Commandments ask us to do. So, God, we love you so much because you love us first. And all of these things, these words, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You know what to do, right? Lord's Prayer. Let's begin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and the glory forever. Amen. All right. Hope you're doing good. See you next week. Wow, what a wonderful message for us today. And hopefully you guys were blessed by God's word today and the worship. Now it's time for the announcements. Pay close attention of the following information. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.